We are not in my art studio right now. We are in our conservatory, in our home. I have summer holiday vacation and we're actually on a staycation, but we did take a couple of trips. And one of them was Aachen in Germany. If you have watched some of my vlogs, you may have noticed that I already went to Aachen last year. And it's a place we often visit when we have vacation. And it's just a really nice and cozy place. And there's also a wonderful art store. The art store is called Lisman, And I actually contacted them and they allowed me to create a new video in the store. And I had a lot of fun filming and they were very accommodating and very friendly. So I felt very welcome visiting there. And I was able to film a lot of things in the store and I was also able to purchase some things. This time around, I didn't really go in there with a certain plan of the things I wanted to buy. I thought I would kind of surprise myself and see everything they have. So without further ado, I really hope you like to see the store again or for the first time. And after our little visit, I will show you everything that I bought at the store. And I will also do a little demo like last time.
I'm back from Aachen and I bought all of the goodies with me. So let's just see what I got. Let's start with the things that I usually tend to purchase and we can move our way up to the more exciting stuff. The uh, Tombo Mono Zero Eraser Refills. Um, I showed these in previous videos. Whenever I am in an art store, I almost always get these. I use these very tiny erasers for my mechanical eraser. So I can add and remove very little details in white. I absolutely love them. They go inside this mechanical eraser, the Tombow Mono Zero Elastomer Eraser. They go inside the eraser. They are 2.3 millimeters, which is really, really tiny. I really recommend them. I also needed some new blending stumps. Mechanical eraser and blending stumps are things I often get questions about whenever I draw with a graphite pencil. I haven't gotten new ones in a very long time because they last very, very long. Now I thought that it's time to replace my old one and I got this really tiny one which will be very nice when I'm drawing a little bit more detailed. If you're not familiar with them, they are made out of paper and they will help you blend the graphite pencil so you do not have to do it with your finger which sometimes leaves a little bit of oil and if you want to avoid that, these are really great. It helps to um, spread the graphite pencil and create soft backgrounds, for example. They can be used for multiple things, but that's what I use them for. Again, I really do recommend these and they are quite inexpensive. So recently I noticed that one of my color pencils was um, getting kind of short. When I was at Listman, I made sure to look for a replacement. It's a Polychromos Faber Castell black pencil 199 and it's a really amazing uh, black color pencil. It has a lot of pigment and my um, old one was getting shorter and shorter, although it wasn't done yet. I thought, you know, while I'm here, I might as well just get it. So one of my favorite pencils. And I also do really recommend the Polychromos by Faber Castell. It's my all-time favorite art brand anyways and I really like their color pencils and I also like their graphite pencils. I also bought this um, Posca marker. It's an acrylic marker and um, it's white. I love to use these whenever I uh, am adding little white details to a painting and I also use gouache or just acrylic paint to uh, add these details but sometimes when you for example need to add little stars or snow it can be quite handy to have this um, marker so the white one and I like it a lot hadn't used it in a while so I was adding everything with brush and paint in the meantime but now for some things I can uh, use this marker and I'm really happy with that it's a very small size I believe it's one of the smallest sizes they have and it's also very nice to use on um, other surfaces other than paper or other than white paper and, and on paint so um, I'm going to show you this a little bit later what I would use it for as well now we have come to the more miscellaneous items that I got Got. So things I wanted to try out and um, I haven't used before. Let's start with these paint brushes. They are Da Vinci paint brushes. It wasn't really really important what sizes they were. I just needed a slightly larger one and a smaller one. And the reason I got these is because they have kind of rough bristles and lately I've been getting more and more into nice textures within my illustrations and paintings. And I find these rough bristles to be amazing for that. It's nice to scrape and you know get some uh, paint drops everywhere and just leave some fun texture and that's why I wanted to try these. I haven't tried them before, but I'm almost certain that I will like them a lot. So one thing I got was from my previous visit to Lisman in Aachen. I showed it in a video in one of the fragments in which I was filming in the store. And afterwards, when editing the video, I just really regretted not getting those. I have tried to take sketchbooks with me, but um, even though I have tried smaller ones, I do always think that they are quite bulky and maybe it's because up until now I always brought sketchbooks with me that were hardcover, even though they were small. So I thought what better way than to try out these um, small travel booklets by Hanemühle. And um, they have a soft cover and I will open them for you so you can see. 
So these both have a soft cover of craft paper and cute rounded corners. I love the way that they are bound and they have this little uh, embossed Hanamuda logo on them. But they are very, very lightweight and I love the fact that it's two. So you get two booklets in one go, which is very nice. And they are so lightweight and I love the, the paper. Hanemühle is also one of my favorite brands for paper. And I just love everything about it. The size, the paper seems very nice. And this book I would be able to carry with me very easily. Maybe I've seen it in a video earlier. I have this small uh, rabbit bag that can carry my phone and other small items. And this little booklet could fit there easily. So I'm very pleased that I got it this time around. I'm not sure if this will help me get motivated to draw whenever I see something outside because that's a general idea that I can take my pencil and uh, sketchbook anywhere and just draw something or write down ideas and maybe this will lead to some success that I finally found a booklet that is perfectly fit for that so I will keep you updated about that. So another thing uh, I got which I'm very excited about are these um, water solvable uh, wax pastels. Um, they are watercolor pastels so I can make marks with them and then add water. I'm very eager to try this out. I've also experimented a lot with oil pastels recently. This is one of the things I think that adds a nice texture to my painting. So I've been experimenting with a lot of texture lately. I thought, you know, why not try out another um, pastel? And this, I, I really bought this on a whim, I must admit. Um, I wasn't 100% sure if I would like using these. Um, I do have watercolors, I do have pastels, so I'm not 100% certain that this is really, really necessary. But sometimes you just get that tingling feeling and you want to try it out and maybe it will be a very nice thing. So um, I'm very curious to go and start using these. It's very nice packaging and I do really like the colors. They do have a very waxy feel and I'm very curious to see what this will look like when, um, when I add a little water. So stay tuned because we are going to try that. I will make some swatches and see how it reacts to water. The last items I got were all quite in the same category so I will show them all together. So these are all a little bit more unconventional for my usual um, art practice. Um, they are all surfaces to draw and paint on. I found this paper that I really really liked the color of and with um, autumn that is coming soon I thought this would be a really nice paper to either draw on or maybe use within um, a collage piece. So um, yeah, that's why I got it. Very random, just one <laughs> piece of paper. Also uh, brown and a little bit sturdier paper tags. I think they are officially used for gift wrapping. I really like that they are perfectly ground and I can make the little hole in them. I thought it would be very nice to make very tiny illustrations on them. And um, again, maybe autumn themed illustrations and to make a little garland out of them. I can also just draw on them and maybe sell them in my shop individually. So add a little uh, of the string to the tags and they can maybe go in the, uh, the Christmas tree with a nice illustration, a nice handmade um, painting, something like that. And that would be possibly something I can add to my Etsy shop. So I thought that would be cute. Within the same category really are these birch wood um, wooden plaques, wooden plaques. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I just love to draw on this uh, texture. They are very, very soft and I many times I've created drawings on them, graphite drawings and a little bit maybe color pencil or um, that's what I'd also use this for, for example, to add some white um, acrylic details. They are amazing for that. And um, with also with autumn coming, I thought this is just so nice and cozy to draw on and uh, to add some little handmade pieces to my Etsy shop soon. So I can't wait to use these. I just love how 
unique each of these uh, pieces are. So not one of them is the same. They are all different sizes, different colors, and the texture of the bark is different, and I just love this. So now that I've shown all of the art supplies to you, I am going to use some of them. I am going to try out my new sketchbook and use a graphite pencil. This is just one of the pencils that I usually use. I didn't get this at the art supply store now, but I am going to use it to draw a tiny sketch, a little character that is going on a little trip outside because that is very fitting for the sketchbook and maybe he's also taking along his sketchbook when drawing outside. So straight away I am noticing that the paper is nice and soft, which is just the way I like it. And this is where the eraser comes in very handy. Because it is almost autumn, of course, I'm going to add a nice scarf Sometimes it is really difficult to draw with um, the camera on. <laughs> so I'm just hoping that this will work out all right. I don't have it in a very comfortable angle, but maybe you wouldn't have noticed if I didn't say anything. <laughs> I really like the texture of the paper and it's just soft enough. But it's not so soft, I think, that it will go and smudge very easily. It's a nice winter coat. He has a messenger bag for his little sketchbook. Little mittens. Maybe he has his sketchbook already in his hands so he can start sketching whenever he feels like it. Let's um, add a little wind, add this little scarf here. It's so cold and windy and rainy here in these last couple of weeks that I'm hoping that there's enough light when filming this. It would be a pity if it's too dark and I'm sorry in advance if that is the case. I still hope you can um, see enough. Let's add a little boots. I must admit that this really is my um, comfort zone. Whenever I need to draw something pretty quickly or need to warm up, then this would be my go-to situation <laughs> for drawing this simple animal doing cute, cozy animal things. That really is my jam. I really, really enjoy this paper. At first I thought maybe this is a bit too hard or not soft enough, but it actually prevents all of the smudging that I typically uh, will notice when drawing. So to test out this Posca marker, I am going to add some of the drawing details to the, um, the inside of the sketchbook. So I'm going to add some extra leaves here. And I also think that makes for a very nice cover page of the book to um, extend the illustration on this side of the paper. Add some fun leaves. So now I can show you this white paint marker and I just would like to start with adding some small white dots. And the other thing that I wanted to show you was the blending stick and I will demonstrate how easy it is to um, for example, blend the ground here. We have a little bit of a fade background. It's 
really quite nice. You can see how fast this is and when you're outside sketching or on location then it really is a lot faster and also looks really great I think. Now we can also show the second part which I use this um, eraser for. A little white accents so I can add some extra nice white details to the background as I do here so maybe it has rained maybe there's some reflection here and there and this really is um, the way in which I tend to work with graphite and those are the tools that I use most so I'm really curious to hear if you also use these supplies or if you want to try them out. I hope this was um, a useful demonstration. I could even add some white details with paint here. I can even go on top of the erase part to make it a little bit more prominent. Sometimes also use it to add a little hairs and of course I must not forget to blend the face a little bit add some little red cheeks or you know darker cheeks because it's so cold outside yeah <laughs> I think I need to call this finished for now also always make sure to close your marker so you can avoid things like this <laughs> So I also wanted to try these uh, watercolor pastels and I made some swatches on watercolor paper. When working with them they mostly felt like soft pastels, so I will now go ahead and add some water so we can see what this will do on the paper. Let's start with the lighter colors and I actually added some white over here and I'm really curious to see. So it does add a very interesting texture I think. Most of all, when you don't use water on the complete um, pastel, so you can leave some interesting bits and pieces, so not everything has to be watered down with watercolors. It's a really nice pigmented color, I think. It's a little bit grainy, I do notice, so it can add to a lovely texture, but if you do not like a grainy texture then this may not be for you if you do like me <laughs> you like that very much it becomes a little bit grainy in some parts and I personally like that a lot for my illustrations so you have to see for yourself if you like that so this is what I mean these little bits you may think that is a paper but it's not the paper it's from the pastels and maybe it will dissolve we can check that out a little later Oh, I really do like them a lot. I can't wait to use them in actual illustrations. can't do that in this video though, it would become a much too long video. But I'd really like to dive into this further, so if you are interested in that, just let me know. So here you can see that green a little bit as well. I really do like to add a little bit and leave some of the texture intact. It gives a lovely mix of textures and contrast, I think. It could easily be used um, as watercolor. It's very rich in pigment. I must say that I didn't expect this at all. I really do like it a lot. It activates quite easily too. And I think I could just use this complete pastel as watercolor, yes. Uh, and it blends very nicely too. I'm a big fan! <laughs> now I want more of the colors! I'm so excited to, to hear what you think about this. Let's test the black, see if it's really black. Yes, it is. Here you can truly see how much pigment these pastels truly have like it a lot. And now, come to think of it, there's another thing I can test. <laughs> ah, that is just great. 
look at that fun texture. Wow, I'm really happy with it. And when trying out new things, it's often um, a little bit of a gamble and I like all of it. So <laughs> I'm very happy. I can't believe that I waited days to open all of this. Let's see if the black dries out so we can once again use the acrylic marker. On paint and watercolors, it's also possible to add details with the Posca markers. I really like it. You can also, of course, purchase all of these markers in other colors, so you can add details in other colors as well. And look what fun textures you can make when the paint is still wet. Of course, you have to clean the point after this, because now it has a little bit of black on it. Let's just clean that off. Yes. You can add all kinds of fun shapes. Yes. So that were the demonstrations that I wanted to show you. And it's fun because a lot of this was new for me as well. And I'm definitely going to try out a lot of fun things with this. I can just imagine adding something like this to your sketchbook and adding a lot of fun shapes and textures. And look at those rich colors. I'm just so happy that I got everything. <laughs> And um, let me know if there are any supplies that you would purchase. Thank you for visiting Aachen with me and for watching the art supplies I got. I really hope you liked the video and I really hope to see you in the next video. If you like these types of videos, please let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to visit other art supply stores. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye bye!